Okay. Hi, I'm Josh. Thank you for coming. This is like 9.30 after the after party the night before. So um, thank you. I'm really impressed everybody's here and like looks awake. We're awake-ish? <laughs> Pretend, it's a story you tell yourself. Um, so come join us, thank you. Um, I meant to me message Carl and say I didn't really like the word slightly in the title. Um, but you know, then I know we got distracted. I think this is a little bit more like fairly advanced topics in block development. Um, so be kind to yourself if this is all new, which it is for the whole community. These are topics that uh, I've come across in my work, um, working on a plugin called Caldera Forms that uh, I'm pretty obsessed with and I, I get the pleasure of working on. Um, it's a drag and drop free responsive form builder and we've been working on incorporating the new Gutenberg block stuff. What does that mean? Um, how much of it are we gonna use inside WP admin and other places? So that's kind of what this talk is about and it's a WordCamp talk. So you're not gonna become an expert in Gutenberg in 45 minutes, but hopefully when these problems come up, uh, you'll remember this. And these slides are at calderaforms.com, WordCamp Montreal 2018. Uh, if you look in the speaker notes, there's gonna be a link whenever there's a code example and you might kind of squint to read and it's a image. If you look in the speaker notes, uh, when you download these slides, uh, there is a link to, um, you know, a file you can download that has the slide, the code. Um, in some cases, it's literally just cut and pasted out of Caldera Forms. Um, it's a word camp, everybody's welcome. What we are talking about today is um, once you've ba mastered the basics of Gutenberg, if you haven't yet, you know, if you don't know how to build a block, that's fine. There are tons of talks about this on WordCamp TV to search for Gutenberg. Um, mine from WordCamp Jacksonville kind of goes before this talk in the um, chronology. Um, but we're going to, hold on, let's go back. Um, we're gonna be talking about uh, building slightly more complex blocks and what do you do about your short codes? Right, you have a plugin, you have a theme, you have a site you've developed, and you have short codes there. It's 100% necessary that those short codes continue to work, right? Um, so let's talk about that, because that's one concern. But also, if you're building plugins, you wanna make sure that your users don't keep using short codes, they start using blocks to work with your plugin. So we'll talk about that. Um, so we're just gonna be talking about like sort of the modern JavaScript tools, constructing like an interface out of Gutenberg components, um, and creating comp components that can be shared, right, for reuse. We're gonna talk a lot about code for reuse. How do we kind of build web, web applications out of WordPress thanks to Gutenberg? Um, this is a photo of my dog. Um, she's super excited, like I got this photo, her food would be slightly off to the right, um, and that's her favorite ball and her favorite little toy. So she was super excited about this, and uh, that's kind of me, Ari, this stuff, like I'm nerding out about it, and it's, um, it's really fun. <laughs> But also like, you know, it's my dog, she gets to be in the slideshow. Um, the um, kind of question of do you need to use all these fancy things that you hear about with JavaScript development, Webpack, NPM, Parcel, whatever. Um, this is an important topic. I, I, I generally side with yes. Um, the period gets its own line for emphasis. Uh, you don't have to. I, is there anything obvious, unobvious about my opinion here? Um, like. NPM yarn, like dependency management, um, consistency. Everybody on your team has exactly the same copy of Lodash, of React, right? And that's a thing that you write one line of code and everybody has the same thing. When you distribute it, everybody has the right dependencies. Um, you can build in your automation for your testing, um, for building for release, right? You know, when we develop plugins, we have test files, we have unminified JavaScript, all the stuff that maybe we don't want to send to WordPress.org we don't want to load on the server in production, but we need for development, um, we can write scripts to do that. Um, so it's really a lot of the crazy stuff about WordPress where we're cutting and pasting copies of like bootstrap uh, jQuery plugins in, uh, that's kind of bad. Cons, known modules gets big, um, we have to learn some new things, I think it's worth it. Um, Webpack, Webpack is a fully featured bundler, so it could do things like take JavaScript files and minify them, combine them. It can um, take new JavaScript syntaxes, ES6, ES next, um, things like um, 
TypeScript and Flow, which create strongly typed JavaScript, but you can't actually run that in the browser. Webpack can compile that to browser-safe JavaScript. Um, yeah, it can help with CSS and images. Because of, um, because of Babel, you can use the new JavaScript syntaxes, and because of WebAssembly, you can use basically everything. Um, it's not the easiest thing to learn, and um, it's a very fast-moving ecosystem. So uh, that kind of, but it, using Webpack and Babel allow you to use the new JavaScript, right? I can never remember if I'm supposed to call this ES Next or ES 2017, and right, um, I just call it the new JavaScript because we get like constant and let instead of var. It's much simpler. Um, we have arrow functions, iterators, fetch, async await. Like it's a really neat uh, language. Using it is a little bit more mental overhead. It's, you know, you often have to transpile. You have to remember if you're supposed to call it ES next. Um, no, but like, you don't, you want to look cool in front of other JavaScript developers, right? Um, so, but once we start doing this, I want to talk about the things that we can do when we use a modern approach to JavaScript development in WordPress. Um, does anybody use Node Package Manager? Right? It's useful, isn't it? <laughs> Let's use it to manage WordPress, right? NPM I WordPress element. Install the WordPress element instruction. That's part of Gutenberg. It's on NPM. Um, this is cut and pasted out of the Gutenberg source code um, for element, what we just installed. Um, and if you look, it's importing create element, create, that's what like React basically does is creates elements. Um, it, all these other things, uh, component. When you see React. Doc, it, you know, class extends React. Doc component. That's React. Doc component. And WordPress is just exporting them right away, unmodified. And the reason for this is, you know, how WordPress uses jQuery one dot something, but jQuery is on three because there's just no better solution for WordPress. There's no way to upgrade the jQuery dealing with the fact that jQuery three has removed certain functions that many WordPress sites are dependent on from jQuery 1. We're just stuck. So this, right now, is literally like cutting and pasting in a sensible fashion. So in the future, if WordPress needs to go in a different direction, we have a place to do it. But right now, it's literally like import React, export React. So everything that we're talking about today is a WordPress concept, but it's really a React concept, which is great because there's a ton of resources out there on how to use React and there's a ton of great tooling and a ton of great stuff. But also, you're WordPress developers, and you're like, what about backwards compatibility? This is smart. Um, when this becomes an issue, this will be how it'll be solved, and it's way better than the jQuery situation. Um, and inside of WordPress, this gets put on a WP global. This exists now. We have like WP dot um, API requests, things like that, in WP admin. There's no real management for it. Um, but now, if you in queue, WP components, you would expect WP.components to be the WordPress components package. And that's things like, in this case, a select control. Or WP element, which has got component for building components. Um, and then WP.i18n, those are the translation functions. WordPress has this great set of PHP translation functions where you give it a string and a name and then the text domain and then it slots out if it has the translation for that string, it swaps it out, um, and you have all those PHP functions, there's now a JavaScript package that does the same thing. Um, so that's the WP global when you're in WP admin and you've, you or Gutenberg or whatever has enqueued WP component, WP element, WP data, using WP and Q script like we always did. So I said that we were um, able to use NPM to install these parts of WordPress. So if we're in a WordPress plugin, we don't want duplicate, right? We don't want to load my, my copy of WPI18N and your copy of W18N and Core's copy, right? That's bad for performance. We want to load one. So I'm going to develop, add them to my develop dependencies so I can test with them. I can use it in isolation. But my plugins, I'll just use WP and Q script to put it there. Um, if I'm doing an app that won't be used in WordPress, I'm just going to install it regularly, so that way it's in my Webpack bundles. Um, and sometimes this gets a little trickier, and like Webpack and Rollup can handle this sort of stuff. 
Um, and I just cut, cut and paste from how it's done in uh, Gutenberg. Um, so what, inside of WordPress now, um, once I've installed, this doesn't really matter if it's WordPress plugin code or a web application code. At this point, it doesn't matter. Like as long as we take this into account in our decision making, the rest of this doesn't really it doesn't matter. This is the same. So I can now, if you do JavaScript development, none of this should be look weird, right? Um, I can just take a piece of WordPress and import it into my scope using Webpack. Um, and then it does all the tree shaking and optimization. If parts of these libraries aren't necessary, it doesn't include them. Um, it's pretty smart. Um, this could be its own slide, but the benefit of working this way is that just an enzyme are really cool testing things. Uh, we were talking about this on the way over here, that when you like start a WordPress site with WP CLI, you get very little WordPress stuff done. Whereas when you create React app, you get like unit testing and accessibility testing and all of this stuff like right away. It's a different developer experience. And when you develop WordPress this way, you get to start to tap into this stuff. And it's great because um, you can have your tests as you're developing them. Um, so anytime your components change, you're just basically taking a JSON representation. So if it changes, it shows you a diff of what's changed. And you say, that's great. That's what I wanted and updated. Or you go, oh, I made a mistake and keep working. Um, so I really love that. Um, AL, uh, you know, accessibility testing, really great. So um, once you have this all set up, you can use JSX. This is an option. You don't need to know JSX to write React or WordPress, Gutenberg. Um, I recommend it strongly. Um, so we'll get back to that as we go. Um, there's scaffolding tools for blocks out there, right? Because this is a lot of setup, right? I think this stuff's important. I think it's worth thinking through if this solves problems that you have in your life. But also, like, I don't want to set any of this stuff up, right? Like, uh, I basically understand um, Webpack. But if you ask me to like set all this stuff up from scratch, and I could cut and paste from code on GitHub, I might get it right. Um, but um, WPCLI is the command line tool for WordPress. Um, these two commands will make you a new WordPress plugin with a block. It's basically like a hello world block, requires no build tools. This would be what I would recommend if you've never built a block. Install this package, type that, modify what it generates. Um, and that's really the best way to get started. Um, for more complex blocks that actually use the modern tooling, Create Guten Block um, is copy is similar to Create React App. If you're familiar with Create React App, um, which is developed by the React team for scaffolding React apps, this um, gives you all of that stuff in a WordPress Gutenberg block package um, in one command. Um, there's also Guten Block. Um, which I've looked at and tried once and then got distracted, but um, it looks really neat. It's similar to um, create Guten block, um, and uh, it also gives you like a Docker environment. Um, I think it's still under development, but worth looking at. Um, Human Made has a um, React WP scripts. That's their own create React apps that handles a lot of the weirdness of enqueuing scripts in WordPress when you use Webpack. It gets weird. Um, they've worked through that. Um, doesn't actually create blocks, but it's really easy just to add a block from there. Um, the, when you're doing JavaScript development, you can have the page refresh every time you make a change. And with hot module replacement, it'll only replace the one thing that actually changed, so it's super fast. Um, and that can be tricky in WordPress. Um, I generally just don't have it. Like the create React, um, or the human made WP React scripts creates a separate dev server that does that, and then you just load it into WordPress when you're done. Um, that works for me. Um, let's talk about building blocks out of this stuff. Um, creating blocks out of modular components. What's really cool about React and Gutenberg is we can have very small functions that do one thing, and then we can build larger things out of them. So the Gutenberg philosophy is everything is a block. As developers, we can go more modular than that. Everything's a component that we've put together to build blocks so our users can build stuff out of blocks. So this allows sort of modular building blocks um, for our code. Um, every single function has one concern. Uh, code becomes reusable, code becomes highly testable. Uh, 
I work in plugin support. Does anybody else here do plugin support, theme support, work for host? Yeah, people are concerned about stability, aren't they? Things break a lot in WordPress. Um, that worries me as somebody who's dependent on more and more people coming in and wanting to build WordPress sites and hopefully they choose my plugin and then upgrade to the paid version, right? So I'm worried about some of these stability concerns. When we as developers write code that's more easily testable, we're more likely to write tests. That helps solve this problem. Um, so has anybody, have we all built blocks? Last time I gave this talk, it was like at the end of the Gutenberg day. And I was like, yeah, that's topics, that makes sense, Josh. We've been talking about Gutenberg all day. Um, I realize now I'm skipping past some of the basic stuff. Um, in your Gutenberg block, um, they, uh, you have an edit callback. It creates the edit interface. We got that concept? Edit, edit callback, edit interface? Um, this is the JavaScript function that generates our edit interface that you see in the Gutenberg editor. Um, and you'll notice that I'm not doing a lot of code here. I'm just dropping components in. Um, we'll zoom back up to the top to see where some of the stuff gets imported from. But inspector controls, that's a HOC from, uh, that's a component from WordPress that when anything inside of here shows up on the right in the, you know, block uh, settings. This right here, this is my actual block. Uh, we'll get into the rest of this stuff. This is the whole thing. We're going to zoom in um, on parts of this. Um, one of the things that we can do in Gutenberg as we start to make this more complicated, we can use data from state, from like what the people are currently typing into other parts of the interface, right? Anybody ever had to like figure out what the categories are and then make a recommended post widget down there? You could do that in real time by just subscribing to the categories. So. If we wanted to like use the current post title now, this was kind of smushed in there. It was kind of hard to read before. That's why I jumped ahead. Um, you saw this in the last slide. We can say WP data, right? This is one of those modules we were talking about importing. I want to select from core editor. I want to select from the post editor um, the document title and the document permalink. So whenever the permalink or the, doc or the, um, or the title changes, this function gets run again in this array, or this object that I'm building here will change. So some, as somebody types and changes the post title, this object will change in real time. How that works just doesn't matter. I mean, it's Redux, I gave a whole talk on it, but um, we don't have time for that. But my point is for you as a developer, it doesn't matter. You should not worry about that. You should just worry about the output. Let WordPress take care of that concern. This is literally all you need to know in order to know what the title is at any given time as it's being changed. That's much different than I'm used to working with WordPress. Um, so what am I doing with this? I'm passing this into a component, right? This is a tiny little function um, that takes props. And then with props, we get that settings back out. We figure out the share link here, right? This is kind of like twitter.com, like this is if you just build a text input. This is sort of the no, you know, no Twitter tracking way of building a Twitter link. You don't want to embed all their tracking JavaScript, uh, which you'd need like a GDPR consent and a cookie consent for, um, and just building a URL. Um, and then building a little link, right? This is JSX here, um, but it looks like HTML, doesn't it? That's a div. You see how it has like an HTML div? That's how you create a div. <laughs> Why reinvent the wheel? Um, let's start reinventing the wheel. You see how it's this class name? Uh, that's because it's a JavaScript function, so you can't use the word class, right? Because that means something very different than like the CSS class. Um, so class name gets rendered as class. Um, same thing with like on a label, it's HTML4 instead of four because four is a JavaScript um, keyword. So this gives us, um, it's very much like in PHP when we can do um, with, uh, in double quotes with, uh, we can put variables in, but this updates live in the DOM automatically for us. So whenever the value of any of what's coming in in props changes, this re-renders as much as it needs to, but as little as it needs to, so it's performing. Um, and there's a ton of math there that I don't understand, but that's why we have Facebook. Like, I don't use Facebook much socially, but I use their open source every day. It's really weird. Um, I really like the uh, inversion of they're working for me instead of the other way around. Um, 
So let's look at an example of how we can reuse um, WordPress's stuff uh, in our own plugins, right? I have this theory that if all the plugin developers get together and use Gutenberg components for our interfaces, it'll be a lot less confusing to use WordPress, right? Because if you learn Gutenberg, then you should, you should automatically know how to use the rest of the thing, right? As WP Admin takes on more Gutenberg components as plugins do. It should be more intuitive to use WordPress because you'll be learning less things uh, and you'll be switching less. So here's another component. Um, I've kind of zoomed into its render so we can fit it on a screen. Again, this is why I have the downloads for my slides. Um, and we, you see how up here we have import, checkbox control, text control from WordPress components. They've got basic controls like radio button, you know, range slider, that kind of stuff. Whatever you see in Gutenberg, you can reuse. Um, and then more complex components. So these are just basic checkboxes where I say heading, label, help text. It's WordPress, so this stuff's super accessible. Like they've thought through all this. Like it still needs work. Like there's a lot of ALI, A11Y issues in Gutenberg that need work. Um, but that's the good thing about WordPress is somebody will step up on them or maybe somebody here. Um, but they'll like put the aria described by tag based on the fact that you put that help there. Like it's figured out for you. And it'll be consistent and if there's a change in the standard, WordPress can update that, right? If WCAG 3.0 is a thing, I assume one day, and it changes how this works, like WordPress can help update all of us once we're through here. Um, so like we say, is it checked or not? And then we have an unchanged function. This is super important. This is coming through, uh, we'll, we'll see this, but this is coming down from it um, when we have to pass data back up. This is coming in our edit callback in WordPress. We're past this function, set attributes. If you're a React developer and you're familiar with set state, this is the same API. I assume it's the same function under the hood somewhere. I didn't look. Um, but our block has some attributes which we define and then when we update them, we use set attributes to update them, right? We get attributes, we get set attributes. And WordPress is passing us this function and saying, hey, you use that function to update the, your values. And then we can, we can wrap it up in a reusable function like this, and then we can pass that into our components. So our components are unaware of the fact that they're loaded in Gutenberg but they work perfectly with Gutenberg because set attributes as a predictable uh, API. And we're just passing this unchanged function down to them. And this is the same slide. Um, <laughs> code reuse. Um, right, so inside of our component, we're just calling on settings change, this dot on settings change. So our component is unaware of what it's doing. It's just calling this function. What that function does doesn't matter. But I said that WordPress's set attributes has the same API as React set state. That's an opportunity for code reuse. It doesn't really matter where it goes to the component. Uh, that also means you can use it with a unit test very easily. The difference between using it in a unit test and using it in real life doesn't mean anything really. So, this is my settings component. Um, I've kind of like lopped off the render here so we can see, we are looking at how it renders, but we get past this on settings change component. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, see this dot props dot on, on change settings. So this is a dependency that comes in and then we just pass it an updated value of what it came in. We merge the change in and we, pa we call that function which then gets called by Gutenberg. Right, because remember that came from Gutenberg in here. So this is kind of this part that I had lopped off for, for the sake. This is the bottom where we have these, these functions. So JSX looks like HTML, um, and it's kind of like if HTML was dynamic, it was live. Whenever any of these values change, it changes for us. Um, but besides that, it's like fancy HTML. Um, Blocks in the front end. This is less complex than it seems. We gave this um, talk at WordCamp Miami, like all day workshop, like four of us in March, when this was all very brand new, and at the end somebody went, okay, so how do I show it on the front end? And we said, but it's just HTML. Right, like 
we spend a ton of time on how to build these complex interfaces that hopefully are just putting HTML into the post content. And then it's like, how do you show HTML in the front end? Well, that's what we've been doing for like 15 years, right? We've been using the, te the WYSIWYG editor and short codes to put HTML into the front end. And if you're saying, yeah, but Josh, we don't actually output short codes. Well, hold on, like there are pages on my website where there's like broken short codes. But in general, we don't want to show a short code, we want to show some markup. So in some cases, we're just going to use Gutenberg to save HTML into the post, and that's great, and then we use H J JavaScript and CSS to, um, to enhance it. So in this case, this is the save callback in our block. Take a look in the handbook at register block. It covers all the different things that you do when you register a block using the function register block. We can all remember register block. Um, so when we save, we can save some, some HTML. What does React do? It generates HTML. So when it saves the block, it'll call this component, which by the way is the same thing I use for previewing it, right? And potentially I could mount in the front end or in so any other React app. And I just use it to save HTML to post content, right? And that's really neat because we could save semantic HTML that works with screen readers, works when JavaScript is turned off, works in low bandwidth situations, and then we make it better progressively. That's really neat. Um, right, like why invent a new thing? Like I know it's WordPress and we like to invent new things, come up with our own way, um, but I love the restraint here. I love the like just save semantic HTML whenever you can strategy. I think that's really uh, beautiful. Um, sometimes your blocks are dynamic, for example, WordPress core has a block for recent posts. It doesn't save the HTML of recent posts there because that can change. Every time it loads, it does a REST API call to get the current post and puts them there, right? It actually queries the database. We've all written short codes this way. Um, sometimes you might want to save your block data as post meta, right? You can query by it. That's super useful. You can do like a where query. Those are great. Um, and so, that might mean like a more complex REST API driven app. Um, that might mean get post meta gets called in your theme. I don't know, these are all problems we had before there, uh, before uh, this. Um, now, you can use a PHP function to register your block. This is super useful if you already have a PHP function that renders what your block does. For example, a short code callback. So in your JavaScript, you can tell Gutenberg, don't save anything. It saves the attributes like magically uh, in one of those HTML comments that doesn't actually get printed, it gets stripped out. Um, so when you do this, uh, the rest is kind of automatic, which is cool. Um, no pun intended. Um, so in Caldera forms, this is what we do because we created a block to show a form, but like we already had a short code to show a form and we already had a PHP function to show a form. Well, why reinvent it, right? I mean. Like that would be fun, but I got other things going on. So um, in PHP side, we can register a block. We can either do it in JavaScript, which is preferred, unless it doesn't work, which sometimes it's just not the right option. In this case, we needed to register our PHP render callback. Um, so I have this function. Um, you'll notice the first thing I do is check if the function register block type exists. And if it doesn't exist, I return. That's key because after that, I'm assuming Gutenberg's installed as a plugin or WordPress 5.0 is active, right? That's a big assumption. Let's test for that first. Um, so we test for that, and then we register a block. Just like REST API routes, they have namespaces. This will throw an error if we don't have that slash there. So all of the ones from your one plugin should have the same namespace, and I have no idea why I abbreviated it, but I'm stuck. I did this in like December. Nobody knew what they were doing. Um, and then, um, I register the name of a function that'll get called when this rendered. rendered. We'll, we'll get to that in the next slide. Um, and then I say it has attributes. We kind of touched on that, and again, I apologize. Uh, well, we're good. Um, the, um, this is 10 minutes, I've got like three slides. Um, the, because I thought we would have like a beginner block, because this is in Boston. Um, but the attributes are kind of the data that your block has. Like, what are the settings of your block? In this case, we have, a, we have this attribute called form ID, and it's a string, and its default value is nothing. There's a section in the handbook on this 
Um, it needs work. Uh, I, should try, I should do some work on it, but it kind of explains this attributes concept. Um, I went way more into it in my intro talk. But the idea is that this block knows about form ID. WordPress handles that automatically storing it, and then when it renders, it calls this function. Okay? So this gets past that array of attributes. I should have run a linter on this. There's an extra space after attributes, but not, well, there isn't a space before attributes. But this is an array. Um, and then if, right, remember the default value of form ID was empty, right? It was just an empty string. Well, that's no good. There aren't forms of that. So we do have to do a little bit of validation. Um, and then as I said, I already had a function that renders forms. So I'm just using Gutenberg as a way of connecting settings in the user interface to this function that just takes an ID and renders a form, right? And this is exactly how my shortcode callback works. You know, my shortcode has, has exactly the same arguments and calls this function. Um, the difference is that um, this is data coming out of the database, so I don't trust it. So I am going to, Caldera Forms very safe string does a lot of sanitization to strings that I don't trust. Um, so I do, right, like it's coming out of the database, I don't trust it. Um, but that's literally all it takes to render an existing PHP function based on the settings of a block. Um, and it's designed to be a lot like short codes, so that way you can um, uh, reuse your short code type architecture, um, which creates backwards compatibility, similar. Um, I'm basically at the end, I'm around the rest of the day, we're doing a lot of this stuff, putting at Caldera uh, WP, putting blocks together, putting stuff that goes in blocks also in React apps, in Laravel, that kind of stuff. So that's interesting, come find me, or um, I'm at Josh412 on Twitter, um, calderaforms.com slash contact to get in touch. Um, it means a ton to me that everybody like came out this early in the morning to hear me nerd out about the stuff that I get to do. Um, so thank you very much. I think I have a little bit of time for questions. Any questions? Jamie? Yes. Yes. So the question is about um, extending blocks. Is there a model here to take a block and make it into your own version of that block? Um, is that that's fair? So yes, there are in WordPress PHP we have this this plugins API. We have do action, add filter, right? Apply filters, add action. There is a if you search on npm, there is a WordPress hooks package. Now that is a JavaScript implementation of that same pattern. So one of the things that happens in the JavaScript code be right after a block is registered is one of those filters goes. So you can actually use that to A, modify it and say, okay, this block has a setting for color. False, that's no longer a setting. Always save it as you know, this hex code. Don't let the user do that, for example. Now also color palettes are a thing. In your theme, you can register color palettes so that'll constrain the settings of blocks to only use certain colors, right? So there's a lot of these options, but one of the things that I've done is at that event, like when the core button block goes, renders, copy its current settings into a one that has like one additional thing and now I have a second block that just, you know, button for one special use. So there's a lot of opportunities like that. And then the other side of what you're saying is like, what if you don't want that capability? Um, on a per post type level, you can whitelist and blacklist blocks. And you can also have like inner column, you can have blocks that have nested blocks inside of them, and you can define what type of blocks go there. So you have a lot of different control, like you can make it so in the books post type, you have like an author bio block, an author photo block, and a you know book summary block, and those have to be filled out, you can't add any more, they go in these positions, or you can say like, that's how it starts, but they can add and remove blocks beyond. So there's a lot of answers to that, which is great because if there was one, they wouldn't be good enough. Do we have other questions?
so the question is and correct me if i'm wrong if you're getting content from a post that was edited in gutenberg via the rest api do you just get the rendered content or do you get the block data right so by if you go to the REST API and you query for WP slash V2 slash post slash 42 and you get post 42 and then you go to you know content.rendered like you always did, you would expect to see all the block content rendered there. So I'm gonna answer your question twice and say no, it's all rendered there just like short codes are, but there are new API endpoints for getting the block data of each post. Because like for the most part, you just want it rendered, right? Like you have a valid developer reason for wanting that data but 90% of the time you just want it rendered, right? And that's why the REST API was built where like the title and the content are an object and you have dot rendered. So that way we can do things like have dot, you know, have unrendered when you're in an admin context or whatever it is. And there is, you're gonna have to look in the docs, there is either an endpoint or a sub route of, there's either its own route or an endpoint of the post route that gives you all the block data but you have to have the right authentication. It's not publicly available by default because there's likely private information in there, but it is available. And also, um, Michael Wood has a blog post. He's wpscholar.com. He's wpscholar on Twitter. Michael Wood, he has a blog post on creating a REST API endpoint out of the block parser, right? Like there's a PHP parser for block data. And um, he, he showed this very simple bit of code that creates REST API endpoints that's just JSON encoded attributes. And that potentially for front end could be very interesting. Query that type stuff. So there are a lot of options, but by default, it's just gonna render it out, which I think makes sense. Uh, other questions, time, are we out of time here? Okay, well, I'm around the rest of the day um, and I love talking about this stuff, so come up if you have questions about Gutenberg, but thank you so much for coming out. I really appreciate it.